Do I say it individually? Like, mm-hmm. I'm Kelly and mm-hmm. this is Lauren, or? No, yeah. just, just say who you are. I'll say who I am. <laughs> My name's Kelly Tebbett. And you? I, I'm your husband, Lauren. <laughs> Remember me? <laughs> we're, and, and we're senior ministers in Calgary, as uh, well as regional overseers for Canada. We were called to Calgary to plant a church for another denomination. In 1995. In 1995. And yeah. so we just did what we thought to do. We didn't really have the support. And we really didn't know what we were doing. No. Do we now? No. I don't think so. <clears throat> but what happened in about 2003, 2003 or 2004, we started feeling like we wanted more. We wanted to do more. And yeah. that the Lord was calling us to like multiply and grow. And boy, when we found C3, it was like just perfect fit and perfect time. It was 2004 and that the first invitation, uh, you know, shook hands, I said, we're in. And then it took us two years to transition our church after that. But um, that, that adoption process was smooth as silk. When we joined C3, it just felt like we were home. Um, the people, felt like they were our people. Right, in the, yeah, in the Psalms when it says that he places the lonely in families, Yeah. Uh, I think that there's something that our heart was looking for in terms of finding our people. And um, I think there's, uh, currently there's a big obsession with finding your purpose. And I think that it'd be better to find your people and then you'll find your purpose. For us, that was the case. As in the life of Ruth, she found her people, said, I'm staying with my people. And she ended up finding her purpose in life. And I think for us, because our purpose seems to be connected with others relationally. And, uh, and we would say, first of all, that C3 was, uh, it was our people mm-hmm. that we found that we could relate to the closest as, as anybody on earth. And, and we would say, we're finally home because mm-hmm. these are our people. My name's Nathan and- I'm Ms. Lisa. And we passed to C3 Edinburgh. We've got one of our cultural personality points at C3 Edinburgh um, is a spirit and a culture of community. Uh, And our heart, and we talk about it all the time, is that people should be coming into our church community and feeling immediately, uh, immediately at home. Um, From the very first moment on the street, all the way up the stairs and, and, and into the place of church. It's our heartbeat, isn't it? We know Richard Green at C3 Church in Ryde uh, coined a phrase and it sticks with me, that the thing that kills a church planter is isolation. Um, And so we commit ourselves, we committed ourselves to not be those people. We wanted to be connected in with our C3 family. So so even from our first uh, six months in this city, um, those years ago, uh, we strategically moved around and met uh, up with C3 pastors and C3 family around. We had a wonderful connection with Pastor Steve and Lisby uh, at C3 Amsterdam, and um, we love them dearly still. Uh, but we wouldn't have been able to, we wouldn't have made it this far without the support of our family here in C3 Europe. In Europe, we've got people who have been running for five or, or seven or ten years, or people who've planted after us, and there's this amazing solidarity that yeah. happens. It's, it's not competitive in any way, I wouldn't say. Um, we, you know, we reach out, I have Skype phone calls with people, um, cry, totally done that. But just uh, people taking the time to create a space where the authenticity um, in the relationship can be shown, the vulnerability, the space of vulnerability in those relationships. You have to be able to talk about it as it is. And it is, it's so hard but so glorious. It's so rewarding and so painful all at once. Those feelings happen simultaneously and you can't do it unless you're connected to people. Hola, my name is Penny. And I'm Lisa. And we are from C3 Lautoka, Fiji. Uh, Let me just tell you, the first Sunday I came into church, Uh, coming in on that Sunday, it was, I, I felt like I was just being dragged in. I really didn't want to come. But then as I entered, 
the seeing the people smiling, they're welcoming us, and uh, you could just tell the the love was genuine. Uh, Sundays would go by, I started feeling this burden just lifting off me. I started fitting in. A friend of mine, she is a nurse by profession. She is part of uh, the Sikri Lotoka worship team. Uh, she came in and uh, she invited me. God really ministered to me through that conference. Uh, the word that was given uh, that day. And I uh, got to know uh, some pastors of the church. And something that uh, attracted me um, to the C3 family was the genuine love that uh, radiates from them. Uh, the genuine care that uh, they showed me. Uh, that sort of captured my heart. And uh, they started inviting me uh, to the connect groups, uh, Bible studies that uh, usually held every Thursday. Uh, from then on, uh, my uh, spiritual life sort of uh, gained momentum. Uh, before I came to the C3 family, um, I, I had actually been separated from uh, my wife almost one and a half years, one and a half to two years. For us, I believe this was uh, a new a start for the whole family. And uh, they were new people. Uh, usually we would get people uh, favoring my side of the story or favoring his side of the story. But uh, as we stepped into the, the church, uh, it wasn't like that. They just wrapped us in their arms, accepted us as uh, we were as we came into the church. Uh, they'd say here, first time you come in, you're a vista. Second time you come in, you're a family. I'm John Pierce. I'm Danielle Pierce. And we're from C3 Church Powerhouse. Oh, the, the feeling of, of C3 is a big global family. And so we've, some of our best friends are C3 pastors either in Australia or around the world. And then also, I guess what's modelled is that our team here aren't just workmates, but they're friends. So we're doing life together. Some of our team here have been 25 years with us and uh, we've been through all this roller coaster journey together. But that's, that's really what C3 is about. It's about relational leadership. I guess the uh, family aspect comes because we care about each other and it's not just about the work role that we are comparing notes with, but we actually care about people's lives and their family and their marriage and their health. And every time we get together, every time we're on the phone, it's always about the person. You know, I can think of one of the great memories or stories of being part of C3 for us is when we first had Pastor Chris Pringle come up here to our church. And uh, Pastor Chris has helped us to dream and believe God. And we were in a weekend community facility, believing to get into our very first rented facility. It was called the Green Building. So when she came, she came and visited it. She came and prayed with us. Um, she wore a green she scarf. She wore a green scarf. And then she, <laughs> she said that she would go away and wear that green scarf. And every time she wore it, she'd think of us and pray that we'd get that building. Well, it took us probably another two years and she visited us an, another time. But what was awesome was that she, you know, when she came back for the dedication of that building, God did a miracle. Pastor Phil dedicated it. She was there. She dedicated our little baby Gemma, who was also a miracle. And, you know, to me, that's, the, that's that sense of where, although we're in different cities, we're with you, we're praying for you, we believe the best for you, and we celebrate with you. And, you know, we, we love Pastor Phil and Chris for really empowering us in our walk of faith. I think we've also learned to make our families a priority so that we don't just sacrifice our families on the ultimate on the altar of ministry we've really learned to prioritize our marriage to prioritize our kids so that our kids grow up loving the house of god and that's been something that's been modeled and taught and talked about a lot my name is kwabana and i'm a I go to Hope City Church, Accra. I was born in a Christian home, so I would consider that as being a Christian. But um, in terms of starting to have a personal relationship, I would say about three years ago. 
Coming to Hope City, the first time I entered Hope City, I just felt a warmth, I just felt family there. People who walked up to me were saying hello, were saying hi. And yeah, it may, f it, at the time, just felt a bit awkward and in my face, but over time I came to see that this was not just a show, and this was really the heart of the people in the church. And when I think about it, the first thing that comes to mind is family. And I'm not just saying it, you know, just to impress, but it's, it warms my heart when I think about coming to church. Um, I remember when I was younger, maybe about six, seven, I would hide under my table, my bed, not to go to church, because I just did not like it. But to go into our world and just let the life and the glory that he brings to our hearts shine through for people to see. And I believe that a life that speaks about Jesus, a life that is telling people about Jesus, will do more than a podcast will. It will do more than a Sunday preach can ever do. Because there's nothing better than a family to start making change in people's life. So I never really had a strong, intimate, vulnerable relationship with male figures until being a part of Hope City Accra and just being starting to be committed, going to dinner parties. I've started to have relationships that have moved me out of my comfort zone. I never wanted that, I never really liked that, but now they are friends that I have that I can be vulnerable to, they encourage me, they push me, they challenge me, and I am accountable to. So I really value those friendships and it's, it helps to shape my day-to-day -day life and thinking because these are men, my age, my group, who are on a similar journey, you know, just a heart that is committed and trying to figure out what this whole relationship with Christ is about. I'm Greg. Julie. French. French. And we've been a part of our C3 family now. This is our 38th year and uh, I've loved the journey of just being a part of what C3 has represented with Pastor Phil and Pastor Chris. You know when people say we're praying for you, they don't have to say uh, we're praying for you and giving you the detail of what the prayer is, but you feel the strength of the longevity of friendship and you feel the power of that friendship purely because you know they are there for you, theirness. That's the beautiful thing about the C3 family. We have yeah. just so many amazing friends, yeah. With the McIntyres and the Pringles and the Kelseys, they all knew each other in those early yeah, they years. All so kind that was grew all up together. Which is wonderful and even seeing them when they get back together again. I mean, nothing's changed, which is great. And having our own families and now seeing our grandchildren, you know, just being a part of that journey of being a part of C3 in the house of God is just probably one of the great joys of our life, knowing that our family are planted in the house of God. My greatest joy is my family. And that's probably why I love the C3 family, is I just love my kids. And now to be part of the C3 family, we just have more kids. And I, I love all of them. I think that um, time is likely measured in minutes, but life is measured in moments. The moments in ministry um, that are the most meaningful are the moments that we've had with people in our movement. And some of those moments are absolutely the richest for me. Here's, here's what's miraculous for me that I never thought I would ever have in ministry is friends who you could be absolutely honest and open with without, transparent. without feeling, yeah, transparent, without feeling condemned or criticized. And, um, and we've had um, some significant things within our years that could have could have disqualified us um, from continuing in ministry, I suppose, or continuing even with the movement. I suppose we didn't get our hearts right, and these people would walk with us through. And I feel like the greatest privilege is being able to do not just ministry but life with people. And so when we get together, um, we we do church, but then we do life. And for us, that is one of the the greatest joys of being part of ministry is the lifelong relationships that we've developed. And after we've done our meetings and after we've done our prayer times and prophecy and push away the furniture and then have a dance party.